What's up, you guys? Chef Billy Parisi here from BillyParisi.com, and I'm going to be finishing up our bread series with a delicious boule, which is a gigantic loaf of bread. We're going to be using a poolish to help let it rise, and we're doing it in partnership with my friends over at Bob's Red Mill. So we are on our last video of this bread making series. We started off with the sourdough starter, how to do it in five days. We made two amazing bread recipes using the starter. The last one we used a biga, and this time we're gonna be using a poolish, which is another pre-ferment, very, very similar to a biga. The only difference is you use a little bit more of the hydration on the upfront, making that pre-ferment than that of the biga. Becomes a little bit more acidy, obviously a lot more liquid in there, some really interesting flavor notes coming out of it. It's really delicious and Polish. Obviously, it sounds a lot like Polish. It definitely has some Polish origins, but it really became popularized in France. Think baguette. This right here is what baguettes are all about, using a Polish. Also would be really good in focaccia bread in Italy. But regardless, I'm so thankful you guys have stuck with me through all this bread making. I've got a beard, I mean, seriously, it's been a wild week. Early mornings, late nights, and the poolish is a little bit different from the sourdough starter, as you don't need to make it for five days, but it's almost spot on to the biga. As I said, the hydration and the flour amounts are just a little bit different. So without further ado, let's get started on this bool. So to make this poolish, what we're gonna do is add some artisan bread flour right to a large bowl. I'm gonna, of course, be using Bob's Red Mill. This is a great flour, perfect for bread making, loaded with protein. Next, we're gonna sprinkle in just a wee bit of active yeast. And then we're next gonna pour in some water that's in between 80 and 82 degrees. Pour it in there, give it a really nice mix. Make sure it's completely combined by squeezing and folding. We need that yeast to be completely incorporated so that it has time to do a little fermentation overnight. Once it is combined, go ahead and put the lid on it. Let it sit at room temperature for as little as 10 hours and all the way up to 24 hours. As I stated earlier, a poolish uses a higher hydration on the upfront. In the biga, if you remember, we use 45% of the liquid and 50% of the flour because we wanted the flour to provide a lot of those flavors in our biga. With the poolish, we use 50% of the flour and 62% of that water. That's why it's really runny. You can see that uh, it will literally pour right out if you wanted to. Don't let that freak you out. It's exactly where it needs to be. So after you've left it overnight, come back, you can see that it is beautiful. It looks like a spider web if you look at it through the side. Tons of holes poking through here, lots of air pockets, and if you smell it, really that strong alcohol flavor coming right through that leathery sort of smell, amazing. So now let's get into making this recipe. So what we're gonna do is add a bunch of Bob's Red Mill whole wheat flour into this. This is just gonna provide some great flavors to this bowl. Next, we're gonna finish off with a little more of that bread flour. We're next gonna sprinkle in our sea salt. We're gonna add a bit more yeast to this mixture. Now go over to that poolish. We've got some hot water in between 105 and 107 degrees. Go ahead and pull it right into that poolish. This is gonna sort of help loosen it up around the sides and then just flip it and dump it right over into our bin full of flour, salt, and yeast and then immediately begin to mix this with your hands very vigorously. Squeeze and pull and fold and squeeze and pull and fold until it is completely combined. This should take three to five minutes for it to be completely mixed in. We do have to do a couple of folds, but first let's go ahead and set a lid on it and let it sit for 20 minutes. After that amount of time, go ahead and come back, take the lid off. We wanna stretch it just before it tears, don't pull too hard, and fold it over. Do this about six to eight turns and times, put a lid on it, and then we're gonna come back in another 20 minutes, do the exact same thing for the next 40 minutes. So three total folds. Just like all of my other recipe videos here, Making Bread, I wanted to give you a little bit more baking knowledge. We've talked about hydration, baker's percentages. Now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about time and temperatures. 
While there isn't a perfect math here, you need to be patient. You have to give this dough plenty of time. And not just the poolish, I'm talking about the bigger and also the sourdough starter Levant. It takes time, okay? It, it needs to work to ferment, to break down the flour so it gets that good bacteria in there to break down the gluten so your stomach doesn't have to. That's maybe why there's so much gluten intolerance these days. Now, I'm not perfectly certain, but I, I'm, I'm guessing that is contributing to it. Also, temperatures. You have to figure your water temperatures when you're pouring in, and then also a final mix temperature. Almost all of your final mixed doughs will be in between 70 and 80 degrees. I like to go a little bit on the higher side simply because my studio is a little bit cooler and I just think that the higher temperature it is without being too hot gives the yeast a more opportunity to work and work through that dough. But I wanna caution here, okay? Because everyone's room temperature is different. If you're in Florida and you like the windows open, I probably wouldn't go as hot as I've been going in a lot of these videos. I'd probably go a little cooler. And if you happen to live in Maine or maybe even Canada and you're a little bit colder up there, that's when you want to up the degrees maybe by one or two points. So I just want to give you all that before we move on to the next step. And also, because we're making a boule, you're probably wondering what that is. It's really just a big flattened ball of dough. Obviously, it's French. Think of boulangerie, which is the bread bakery. This word comes straight from that or probably actually invented boulangerie. And if you've ever seen those old movies, like I think in Gladiator, where they're throwing bread out to like the audience uh, that's watching them fight in the Coliseum, this looks like what they're doing. I mean, this thing is gigantic. It should feed you for probably a week. And the other cool thing, before we go on to the next step, sorry, there's so much knowledge we drop in here. A lot of these breads that have the pre-ferments and the sourdough stardom, they're a little bit more acidic, so they can last longer. I mean, probably eight to 10 days. If you baked homemade bread eight to 10 days, it's either rock solid, you've got mold growing. This is a great bread that'll last you a little longer than the usual thing. So now after that last turn, you want the dough to rest for another two hours, giving it a max rest time of three. It looks beautiful. It's about tripled in size. Now it's time to move it over to our peel. So go ahead and remove it from that bucket on a very heavily floured surface. Now what we want to do is fold it and then form it. So remember, stretch from the top right to the bottom left, the top left to the bottom right, fold it over again and begin cupping it. That, that motion that kind of works from the top all the way to the bottom, cupping it underneath, making a beautiful dough ball here. And then what we need to do is move it over to a peel. If not, flip a cookie sheet tray over if you don't have a pizza peel. We're gonna lay down a piece of parchment paper and then we're gonna heavily flour up the top of that. Go ahead and set your dough right over top of it. We're gonna sprinkle it with a little flour, add a kitchen towel to the top, and then we're gonna let it proof for about one hour. It is looking beautiful. So while this is proofing, go over to the oven, lay down a pizza stone right in the bottom of the oven, push it in. We're gonna get it up to 500 degrees, just like all the other bread dough recipes. Let's stop right there. If you don't have a pizza stone, flip over a cookie sheet tray. You can put it on that, it's totally fine. Just preheat it, make sure it's very, very hot. That is important to this step. What we're gonna do is come back over to the bread, take that towel off. You can see this thing is massive already, and I'm going to score it. Feel free to take some slashes, maybe three or four all the way through the entire top, going as about a eh, quarter inch deep or so. I'm gonna make little leaves or petals or whatever I want just because I want it to look pretty. So this part is completely up to you. Now go ahead and go over and transfer the dough right on top of the stone. And for a little trick, I've got a huge metal bowl. I'm gonna flip it over top and put it right on the stone, covering the bread, push it into the oven. We're cooking covered for 30 minutes at 500. We're gonna take the cover off. After that time, we're gonna cook it for another 30 minutes, get it nice and golden brown. And let's stop right there because you may not have a bowl this big. What I'm trying to do is get some moisture in the air because there's already water in the dough when it's covered in those Dutch oven 
pot tops. And of course, with this bowl, it's steaming and making that bread really tender, moist, getting that nice crust on the outside. This You want to do this with all of your bread. So if you don't have a bowl this big, no problem. Put a pan in the bottom rack of your oven. And then when you put the dough in, throw a couple ice cubes into that pan. It will steam that bread, get sort of that same effect. It will keep it all right there in the oven. Let's take it out and you can see that this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's gigantic. It is amazing bread recipe for sandwiches, for garlic bread. I mean, goodness, this is amazing. It's got a perfectly brown crust on the outside and it's extremely tender on the inside. Of course, we want to slice it up. You can see those beautiful air pockets running through. It's light, it's fluffy, it's tender. It's exactly what bread should be every single time. Cool it for 30 minutes and time to eat. I've seriously been dying to have a piece of this ever since it came out of the oven. It smells incredible in here. Oh my God. It is just, dude, it's everything. It's so good. I wanna eat more of it. Guys, I can't thank you enough for watching this bread series. Thanks to Bob's Red Mill for hooking up some amazing flour so I can make this awesome bread. I've had so much fun. And of course, check out all the other bread recipes I've made. You will love them. It will change the way you look at bread, the way you make bread, and the way you eat bread. The flavors, oh, this is amazing. I had a lot of bread to eat, clearly. We'll catch up with you next week.